Hello, I am Clement, Chief Architect and Co-Founder of Wavefront. I am here to tell you about distributed tracing. We are super excited to announce the availability of distributed tracing support in Wavefront today. And now, if you're coming in from a open source uh, project such as Zipkin or Jaeger, you probably are no stranger to distributed tracing. But if you're uh, new to distributed tracing and want to know a bit more, I hope uh, this video will help you to understand a little bit more why distributed tracing is such a powerful tool to debug, analyze, monitor, and troubleshoot your applications. Um, but just in case you did come here because you are used to Jaeger and Zipkin, I want to let you know that uh, the Wavefront system, the Wavefront proxy specifically, can actually just take the data that you're collecting today uh, with Jaeger or Zipkin and just have us manage that as a, in a SaaS platform. And you don't have to deal with scalability. You don't have to deal with uh, issues of retention. And uh, we just basically take the management aspect um, of, of storing, visualizing, and alerting on traces um, from you so that you can concentrate on, on building applications and, and managing your infrastructure. So with that, I want to talk you know, about kind of distributed tracing. And, but instead of talking about distributed tracing in the context of applications, I just want to use an example of, of how distributed tracing could really apply to kind of any situation um, uh, in real life. And let's say you know, it's in the morning, and it's you know, 7 AM. And you decided to you know, get out of your house, and you wanted to um, take a ride. Let's say, let's say you want to take a Lyft ride to work that day. And let's assume you know, the first thing you do is you walk out of your, you know, walk out of your apartment, and then you pull out your phone, and then there's some kind of, you know, the phone you know, calls some back end service, and then it gives, tells you, like, OK, the car is going to come back in about five minutes. And, and you said, OK, cool. I'm going to you know, call, call, the, call, call the Lyft uh, ride. And then you kind of stand there again, you know, wait for about five minutes. And then you know, during that time, you know, the, the car actually you know, come over to you. And you're, you're on, on your way. You're on your way to, to work. And, and, uh, and, and as, that, as part of that journey, you know, the, the system is constantly phoning home, telling the system you know, where we are, where we are, kind of the, the estimated ETA. And then finally, um, you get dropped off. And, um, and then you finally are, are at work. So you're done at work. And it's kind of like, let's say it's you know, 7.30 AM. All of this can actually be modeled as a distributed tracing problem. You have a single, I, want, I don't want to say transaction, but you have, a, you have a single activity that's going on. And you globally want to identify this with a single unique ID. And in the context of distributed tracing, it's called the trace ID. So you could, you could imagine, let's use this example and, and just say, you know, this, is, this is your November 15 morning commute, right? That's your trace ID. And all of the things that happened, whether it's you know, pulling out your app, whether you're uh, pressing the button to, to, to get a ride, whether it's you know, you're pulling out your app and the, app is, the driver app is uh, phoning home and telling uh, your ride company where you are, as well as you know, you're getting dropped off and getting charged, all of that relates to a single trace. And, um, and, and in this particular case, is your November 15 commute. And you can see there are many pieces already in this kind of distributed trace, right? It's something that's happening in particular on your phone. There is something that's happening in particular to some sort of a ride um, finding system. And then there's something that actually calls the driver, right? And then there's another app that's involved, and that's the driver's phone. And then finally, there's, a, there's a, a, a transaction that happens that actually talks to your credit card company that uh, actually charges probably the, the pre-authorization. Right? So all of these small bits of, of actions that comprise this entire trace is what we call spans. So in, in uh, traditional parlance, all of these are, are, are typically just globally unique IDs. But you know, in this particular case, you could imagine you know, this is the you know, phone. Um, and then you have a, a you know, ride service going on. And then you have the actual calling of the driver. And then you have the actual ride. And then the credit card authorization. Right? So imagine why you want all of this in, in a single system such as Wavefront. And it's because you want to figure out, let's say, you know, something is wrong with your credit card authorization at the very end of the journey. Right? That's kind of the worst case because you know, you, you kind of pre-authorized uh, the credit card, and then you're actually not getting uh, the company that, or, or your business is actually not getting paid. 
Right, so what you can actually do in Wavefront today is to bring all of this disparate actions, again, um, analogous to spans, associated with a single trace into Wavefront, and Wavefront helps you visualize that. And the most common visualization that you would have is a timeline. So a very uh, typical view is what we call an icicle view, where you see a global trace, or there may not even be a global trace technically, but just uh, all of the, the bits of actions that are related to that entire activity. And Wavefront visualizes that in a single place and identifying the different components or services that are related to the entire action. Again, this is your, your morning commute. And let's say there's a particular problem that's going on, which ultimately may have propagated upwards to an error message to the phone, right? So the final step is you getting off uh, and, and you basically seeing, you know, how, how was your ride and, and all that kind of stuff. But, you, you, you know, if, it, if, the, if the charge didn't go through, it might actually come back with an error, you know, a nasty error message. But that error message may be deep down, meaning it's, the, it's because of a backend component that's failing. And so you could drill through into that particular span. I'm trying to, to kind of uh, expand this particular section here. And you can actually see it is actually a particular span that's having a problem. And with distributed tracing, you could add annotations to a single span. So it could be, OK, well, this is an authorization to, let's say, Visa and you have some sort of an auth code that's going on. And um, maybe you could even have a line number that, um, that indicates the problem that's in, in your code and any diagnostic information there. So all of that is percolated upwards, maybe ultimately as an error message to the user. But this enables you to drill down very quickly and find out, oh, it's actually credit card authorization. Maybe in this particular case, it's a problem with a, with a payment processor. And you could actually then figure out you know, what is the best course of action to take. Now, distributed tracing is, is powerful compared to traditional APM because, as you could see, it could be something that spanned, in this particular example, 30 minutes. But it could also be something such as order shipping. For example, you somebody place an order, and that's a single um, activity that's going on in your, in your application or in your business. And maybe the shipping action actually happens a couple of days later. And if you, if you want to model it that way, you could do that in Wavefront and see the entire trace in the system. Um, what you could also do, uh, especially with what uh, Wavefront is offering, is to take in our open trace and compliant interfaces as well, as well as open census compliant interfaces and have your own traces be injected into the system. So for example, uh, let's say you're a Go developer and there's a particular path. You know, you're not making an external call. You're not really you know, calling an, an Amazon service. But there is a function that you're calling, and uh, you really want to know how long is it taking, what are the users that are involved in that function. And you could emit that um, through the interfaces that we provide, either directly emitting it to Wavefront or through open tracing through Open Census. And we'll gather all of that up. And again, remember, as long as it's within a trace ID, as long as it has a trace ID, then we could uh, group all of that together so that you can see the, the, the results. Now, one of the interesting things um, with Wavefront is not just for us to provide you this view of a single activity, but we also provide aggregated information about how things are actually interconnected. So imagine you could have a system where uh, people are just joining your company, trying to understand you know, what's really going on with the application. How is this flow happening um, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, and how many times are people you know, having problems with a particular payment processor? How long are people spending you know, waiting in, in their car, you know, getting, to, getting to their places? And how often are people um, uh, calling a particular, uh, pressing maybe a particular button and ending up with a ride? All of that information is what, are, what we call metadata that's, um, that we could aggregate on top of all the span information. And oftentimes, that, that's presented as a topology view, as a causal view, as a time spent uh, kind of view. And um, we are just scratching the surface um, currently at Wavefront on what we can do with that data. And we're happy to announce today that we have an ability to provide a complete inventory of your service, as well as to provide a, a preliminary service map of how things are internet connected together. Um, we definitely um, ex expect to have a lot more data because of all the, the enriched information that's being sent into Wavefront and trying to give you the best possible visualization of how things are interacting together, where trouble spots are happening, where hot spots are happening, and where you should be even spending time optimizing performance because a particular area of your code is slow.
So hopefully you get to, to try it out. You know, we have an SDK, observability SDK, that you could drop into your application. And you can start emitting traces immediately to the SaaS platform. And you could then look at um, you know, your spans and your traces. Hope to talk to you guys soon. Thank you.